Welcome back. Well, brisket, chicken, and ribs, oh my, it is time for some meat madness and some good old barbecue. Who doesn't love barbecue? Can you guys smell this? It smells oh. so good. Superstar chef Ronnie Killen is here to tell us about his award-winning meat, and you're going to show us how to get this taste, you know, delicious restaurant taste at home? I'm going to try. Really? Okay. <laughs> we want to know all the secrets. So tell us what we have here then, Ronnie. Quite spread. Um, we have our beef brisket over here. We have a pork St. Louis style rib here. This is a uh, big beef rib, which we're kind of known for. It's uh, called a plate rib. And then we have baked beans, cream salt corn, our collard greens, mac and cheese, potato salad, carrot cake, bread pudding, and It's a whole meal here. Is it really okay? I, I can't much. help but notice, by the way, our zombie, I think, can smell this meat because <laughs> he's, uh, he, he's... You want some of this? Want some? Want some? Uh-oh. He's coming oh, after no. you. But, so uh, let's, dive in, let's dive into the sauces. You've got a couple of different ones. Yeah, well, what we do is, you know, being a chef, I mean, we just don't like one barbecue sauce for everything. To me, I think that it's kind of like... Um, you have things that wake up, like this has uh, a lot of fat in it. So the fatty or beef rib, I think something that's bitter that has a little, like we put coffees. The coffee sauce goes to that. I think it wor works really well. So coffee sauce more yeah, with, the, with it's, the... It's like a, say a red wine that has a lot of tannins going with a ribeye steak that has oh, a little really? fattier rather than a, a pinot going with a filet. How so, would people know that though? So, so if we're it's preparing just, a dish Ronnie at tells us. <laughs> but how would we know which sauce would go with which Just meat? balance, you know, acidic and sweet and Sour, I call them the five S's, smoky. So you know, maybe the darker the meat, you go with a darker well, no, base for yourself? Well, no, just the cut. I mean, you know, if you have more fat in the cut, like brisket, you can see this brisket up here is very lean. But on the other part of the brisket, called the point, you have a lot of the, the fattier things that are rendered down. It's kind of really nice and rich. So we like the coffee sauce with that also, too. Okay, what about a sauce that's maybe a little bit more tangy? Um, this is the sauce that we have right here. It's good. We actually call it the tangy, which is more of a, like a Texas classic sauce. So, you know, you can put it on your on your lean brisket or you can put it on, really, you can put it on anything you want. But what about like way, a pulled pork or? Pulled pork, you can go with more of a sweet. That's what we do. If you can see the glaze on these pork ribs, uh, you know, we, we recommend it. But it's just a preference and, and we just don't like to be one. one what about chicken? Dimension. Which one of those do I pick for chicken? Any one you want. But, uh, you know, the, the classic, I think, is the classic reminds me of like the perfect bite when I was a kid. So that's that's what we do with that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, it, the, the smell is so nice that I can't I can't hold it anymore. I've got to try some of this. Now, Ronnie, is that it true? Is. You opened your first restaurant when you were just 23 years old yes and right. most recently you opened a location in NRG Stadium right yes we just uh, premiered I guess this past Saturday we have two spots in the stadium which uh, that was a lot of fun feeding that many people but uh, we enjoyed it I bet there everything, was a came, everything came out really well Very well happy. congratulations yeah. that's fantastic I was at the I Texas really game really oh, really you. really like the blend um, so JJ Watt uh huh. Good friend of yours, I hear. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's. We keep in contact. He's a good guy. So you you got some pictures of him up, and mm -hmm. you know that that's kind of cool. Right, let's slide on over. Let, let's do some demo uh, with if you're going to do this at home. Okay, so picking out a brisket. You know, there's an old saying, a wise tale, that if you go and pick out a brisket, you want to be able to fold it. Uh, I really don't believe that because normally when you fold them, that that means that brisket's been soon frozen. So there's a lot of liquid. It stretches out the crawl back, and it's kind of a wise tail. I notice that we're we're gloving up, so that we're so, going to help you out here. To pick them out, we use uh, a certain brisket. It's just it's really good. There's not really a lot of trimming to go to it. The thing is huge. How much does that weigh? The, the, in between 14 and 16 pounds is normally what our what our range is, and then we'll trim probably two or three pounds of it off, and just to make it kind of like aerodynamic. And I know that sounds funny with a brisket, but you think about the smoke and anything that's not aerodynamic, it kind of sticks. To it. So you can get points in the brisket that may be tough, or not tough, but you know, over over smoke. Wait a minute. So what should we be <laughs> looking for to ensure our meat is aerodynamic? Well, that's where you have to. That's where the trimming comes in. There's this right here. This is called the point. I'm sorry, the so flat. So let's split this up so folks can see it at home. Wow, you're see, getting right in there, Jamie. Right. Why when not? you look at this, <laughs> this right here is the flat, which is going to be the lean in if that brisket over here. Then the point is basically where, if you think about it, it kind of points, points like up this. Here. And this is where you kind of put this toward the heat. So if you have the heat source coming from the side offset cooker, you want to put this toward the fire box. Is that just, just because to, that's the thicker point yeah, of meat? Yeah, because you, you don't want to put it this way because then it'll dry out. Dry out. And you want to keep it nice and kind of self-basting. There's a lot of, like, different 
ways to do it. I always have cooked with the fat side up, the big end toward the firebox or the heat source just because that's just what I grew up doing. Now when but, it comes to the seasoning and the sauces, how should we be preparing this? Well, for me, we I've, I've always used this uh, French's mustard and the Good mustard old school wood. French's yeah, mustard. Just <laughs> hot dog mustard, it's plain and simple. But uh, we put that on there just so when you move the brisket, it doesn't crack, it keeps it from cracking. The, and you know your bark and everything falling off. Okay, and, so and let's dive it's in. Also, it's also acid, but one of the things that I would recommend doing is you always have to come up there, there's like a little heel here, and you always want to remove this because it doesn't matter how long you cook it, it's never it's, gonna be good. So, so that big white area, that's the, yeah, that's the heel the area you wanna get rid of. I don't know if our of. viewers can see that at home, but it's a big white fatty area yeah. on right, the back. Right, you can see that, but you know all this Ooh. little, this I little know, area so over here, you can, it, you know, you can trim all day if you want to. To me, I don't like to trim all day. So there's just areas you want to remove. This brisket actually Yeah, you looks, didn't do much trimming looks, at all. It looks really good, so. Now, Ronnie, we only have about a minute left. Once the, the fat is trimmed off this cut, then, then how should we be seasoning and preparing dig it? Dig into some mustard, put your, just get it all. Oh, yeah. Let's, I'm about to use yeah. the spoon. You guys just get in there. <laughs> You tell I have a problem getting dirty. You know I so want to do I mean, like I don't, <laughs> don't mind getting on. dirty, but you guys are doing a fine job. So then, once you've massaged this mustard all over. Just then, on one side or then, on both sides? Well, you can do both, but then I'll come in. This is just basically salt and pepper, and you want to season it up really good because this is what creates your bark and your sugar and so, just makes the shine, just makes it good. So pepper, you'll just put more, a bunch more of the pepper. pepper. All right, yep. then what's the third? And then this is our rub. This is ha This has like chipotle powder, mm -hmm. it has uh, sugar. But that's the secret killings mix, right? Yeah, we, ha we have this that, that people can get if they want to try it out. So you can tell us all the ingredients. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's cayenne pepper, chipotle powder, there's uh, sugar, black pepper, um, what else, uh, lemon pepper, because I like that. Oh, lots little, and lots of peppers. All right, so for more information on Killin' Barbecue and the meat rub recipe from today, visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Thanks, Ronnie. And all this incredible barbecue is making me a little bit thirsty. How about Ooh. you? Well, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? So when we come back, we'll take you on a tour of Houston's first craft brewery. And if you like men in lederhosen, or even if you don't, you won't want to miss this. We will be right back. Stay there.